Joining us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline, a man who also has swag, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, back on the show. Happy Friday, Greg. You are a busy man and only going to get busier with the COVID-delayed women's soccer season starting up. Throw that into BYU basketball. Baseball's coming along short. How is your travel schedule shaping up for the spring? Uh, it's, uh, it's quickly populating. My apps are filling up with flights and hotels and things, and it's a beautiful thing. Well, what was it like to be back in the Marriott Center, by the way? Because I think it, it, it probably felt like a year. It was like a month ago. Yeah, for me, it was 40 days because I actually missed the Texas Southern home game. I was in Florida for the Boca Raton Bowl, so it had been longer for me. I hadn't called a home game since uh, the December 12th game against Utah. So it, uh, it, it was nice to be back and get that courtside seat again. And, and even without fans uh, in the building, it still feels good to be at home. And I know the players loved shooting on those rims again, and they said it made a big difference. And I, you know, I just, just wait for the day when we can feel the vibe of a home crowd filling the stands before game time. I'm not sure when that will be. I hope it's this season at some point because it makes a big difference. Uh, but either way, uh, it's, uh, it's great to have three home games in a week and a half after BYU playing only three home games in seven weeks. And that's what the schedule is given BYU. Amen to all of that. Greg, when you look at what this BYU basketball team has done, now 12 wins in 15 games, they've won three straight, all in conference. They're clearly pacing to be the second best team in the West Coast Conference, yet we kind of feel like identifying who this team is is a moving target. So at essentially the halfway point of the season, what do you feel like we know about this mysterious BYU team? Well, I I think the identity has been established, and that's toughness. Mm. This is a tough, tough team, and they can win in a variety of ways. Last night we saw them hit 14 threes. Okay, and that's that's kind of like, well, that's BYU basketball. That's that's the kind of Mark Pope team we're used to seeing. 14 threes make sense. Well, they you know, they beat St. Mary's with one three. So that's also BYU basketball. And so that's that's where this team is right now. Um, you can take away a certain element of their game. They'll find something else to go to. And ultimately, as we saw in both those wins in the Bay Area over the weekend, when it's closing time, it's a really tough team, even tougher Uh, at clamping down, making big uh, big plays when needed. And it really comes from up and down the roster. That's, I think, the other big storyline from this team is a two deep has developed. It's not straight position for position, two deep, but it's 10 guys, all play, all contribute. And every coach would love to say, yeah, we've got got nine or 10 guys. But, you know, nine or 10 guys that really have significant roles, that's a hard thing to find. Usually that's kind of limited to maybe six, seven guys you really, really count on. Well, they're counting on those 10 guys in, in, serious, in serious minutes and, and, and big roles and important roles. And so I think that's a, that's a huge thing about this team is BYU can kind of come at you in waves a bit right now. And maybe not a coincidence that you know, late, late in games is when BYU tends to play some of its best basketball. Um, you know, the, the depth and the size can wear down an opponent. And we saw it again last night. You know, BYU has been a real good second half team all year. And it's been even more pronounced in league than it was out of league. Uh, They're about, you know, 14, 15 points a game better right now in the second half of games uh, in conference. And so they get stronger as they go along and they figure some things out as they go along. They make adjustments as the game progresses. A lot of real positives with the, the depth BYU has right now. Yeah, I love what the coaching staff's done because it was one business model, uh, you know, and way to do things last year. Now it's different, so that's credit to them. And uh, last night was the Matt Harms game, Greg. Uh, nine for nine, second most makes without a miss in a game BYU history. 23 points. He was awesome. This is what we thought he could do, and we saw his best game as a Cougar so far. Well, last time I was on the show with you guys, you asked me after Alex Barcelo, who's the most likely candidate to be the number two scorer. And I said at the time, well, Matt Harms, it made the most sense then. I think it makes the makes the most sense now. He's seven three and takes a lot of his shots right at the rim. Uh, so the potential is there to have that kind of game like he had last night. And, and it was good to see him finally make a three because we know he can hit it. He wasn't a major volume three point shooter at Purdue, but he shot a better number there than he had been shooting here in Provo. And, and there was a sense of relief, uh, some exaltation. The guys really loved to see it uh, when he hit that shot. Cause that's part of his game too. So he really can be the, uh, the complete package for BYU. And I think the number two in the big three, Big three, Barcelo, Harms, and Averett, all three got in double figures last night. And then you're getting other guys in doubles, as we've come to expect from now Richard Howard, who's done it in five of the last six games, for example. So, um, you know, Matt 
had uh, you know an all-timer of a game for BYU last night, but he wasn't the guy putting up all-time numbers. wasn't the only guy putting up all-time numbers. Uh, AB a- had had eight rebounds. That's a college career high for him. Uh, Caleb Lohner's career is young, but six helpers uh, for a guy that uh, specializes in rebounds, and so that was encouraging to see as well. A lot of good things to like last night. Yes, Portland struggles mightily. Uh, but it's still, you know, they, they they took a close game and made it really unclose really quickly in the second half. Greg Rubel with us on BYU Sports Nation, the voice of the Cougars. Which or what part of BYU's game as a team, or maybe even an individual, has been the biggest surprise to you thus far? Well, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to call it a surprise, um, but maybe the level to which he's excelled has impressed me more than I thought I would be impressed. And that's Alex Barcelo. When you go from the number four guy to the number one guy and do it the way he's done it uh, on greater volume and be a better shooter across the board and every category, more rebounds, more assists, just better play overall when you got to be the guy, that's really impressive. And again, I think we all knew uh, it was in him, but uh, to the extent he's excelled is, has been uh, truly uh, exemplary. And uh, it's been wonderful to see Uh, he's, uh, you know, everything you want in a teammate. Uh, He can do it different ways, too. Like Mark Pope was telling us in the postgame show last night, if it it needs to be a high assist night, he can do that. A high scoring night, he can do that. Um, He can do different things on different nights, regardless of of what's required. And, And again, to be so good with so much more volume. Again, it was it was it was Toulson, Haas, and Childs last year. He was the next guy, the other guy. And you get lost sometimes. You get less attention. It's maybe easier to get your looks. Well, this year it's all eyes on Alex Barcelo. And 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 some guys, you know, might shrink from that. Their games might look different because of that. They might go, well, if I can't score, I can't contribute, but that's not him at all. So that's uh while not truly surprising, I think it's just been impressive um, how good he has been. Uh, on the greater volume and the responsibility and what BYU needs from him this year. It was a good night for BYU in terms of jumping up uh, in the resume and bracketology. Joe Lenardi uh, about half an hour ago says BYU is up to a nine seed and 36th overall. Uh, BYU climbs in, into the top 30 in net. How do you feel about where BYU fits right now in the tournament resume? Yeah, it's different situation from last year in terms of where they were in the conference campaign. But, uh, you know, a lot of their metrics uh, are, are already better now than they were through 15 games or at the same point of the season last year. So BYU's pacing for a single digit seed right now in the NCAA tournament. And it's, you know, Ken Palm says, you know, BYU's favored in the next 11 games. They've already won three. You know, can BYU really go on a 14 game win streak in league? Uh, you know, Gonzaga is at least usually the only, the only team that, that does that. Um, so on paper, BYU is supposed to win 14 straight games. Well, that's a lot easier said than done. It's hard to do that in any league. And and invariably, you know, you have those games. And BYU almost had one, for example, last year at San Diego, right? That would have been a, a quote-unquote bad loss. BYU comes up, makes a big play in the final seconds, and, and gets out of there with a win they absolutely needed to have, which brings us back to this point. Since Mark Pope's been the head coach, guys, Zero bad losses. I mean, not a one. And 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 what's kind of held BYU up in the past in the WCC has been those quote unquote slip up games, right? The games you lose, you're not supposed to lose. Well, yeah, BYU didn't win the league last year. That was going to be Gonzaga, but they still didn't quote unquote slip up. They had no bad losses. The losses were explainable. And and so if you're if you're perfect in quad three and quad four, and that's what BYU's been now for a season and a half, you're probably an NCAA tournament team. And and you just hope that that Eddie you know, a little hiccup, if it does come, isn't too punitive for BYU because they've had an amazing run. They don't lose back-to-back games. They don't lose quad three or quad four games. They take care of business. That's been really impressive. And the numbers say they're going to take care of a lot of business here over the next month and a half. If they do, fantastic. It would really be tremendous to see BYU get to, like the paper says, 23-3. and three. Well, you know, that that's, that, that, that's a high-bracket team at that point. So uh, it looks promising, but a lot of work to be done. And you can find every game and have it be a scary game in the West Coast Conference one way or another. Guys, would you indulge me with one thing before we uh, take off here? You bet. Today? So I was thinking about this. As, as you talked about uh, just with me, uh, you know, what makes this team special or what's surprising or uh, I, I think about how they've got this 2D going, right? They're, they're 10 guys right now. And no disrespect to Jesse Wade or Hunter Erickson or, or Brandon War, but I, I'm focusing on 10 guys. And I'm going to take you a little bit inside here. So when BYU does a game day scout, they they line up BYU players, and then they line up the scout players, 
and they have the BYU players who have their primary responsibility for that player, and they have to give a three-word description of the guy they're guarding, mm. and only three words. Okay, and so you got it. You have to have studied. You have to focus. You have to distill it down to those three words. Well, I, I want to do a three-word exercise for the ten guys that BYU is playing. Can we do that real quick? It's yes. only an hour show, Greg. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it, Greg. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the two deep. And I'm going to give you three words that I think about each guy. Okay, right? and then that'll close us out. Okay, Alex Barcelo, shooter, leader, winner. Love it. Brandon Averett, fast, crafty, clutch. Yes, clutch. Mm, clutch. Trevin Nell, physical shot maker. Ladies, man. Uh, Colby, Col- well, yeah, we're trying to keep it on the floor. Uh, Colby Lee, quickie monster, dependable. Matt Harms, finisher, rim protector. Paul? Richard Harward. Richard goes without saying. Uh, Richard Harward. Richard Harward, force of nature. Okay. 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 Caleb, Caleb Lohner, rebounder, constantly improving. Uh, Spencer Johnson, smooth shooter, determined. Instapot. Gideon George, Gideon, <laughs> Gideon George, versatile, freaky athletic, and uh, Connor Harding, team guy, grinder. Those are my three word descriptions for the two deep BYU's going on right now. That's my scout yeah. of the current Cougars for you. Hoagies and grinders, navy beans, navy beans. That's what I think of. Yeah. Okay, Greg, I've got three words to explain you. Intelligent wordsmith. You cool with that? I'm okay with that. Is Thank you. one word? Can we get another one? I, can't I, don't, I don't know. Is Wordsmith one word? Is, is Wordsmith one word? We'll figure yeah. that out later. It probably is. Okay. I'll take, I'll take yeah. two. Prepared. Yeah. Intelligent craft. You're crafty too, Greg. Greg Rebell, thanks so much for the <laughs> time. Is a good compliment? No, I'm yes, just Of course it is. <laughs> Greg, on the Deseret First Credit Union Highline, Deseret First, you know why we show how. Yeah, that's great. I love that. And the fact that they have to sit there and know the scout. It's not just like, oh, he like shoots well and he's left-handed or something. Like, No, it's like distinct things, right? I love